when I was, I, I'm trying to think when, there was a documentary that came out, um, which was the first documentary on British television about hip hop and graffiti culture and hip-hop culture, basically. And it, it was um, it was about a, 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 um, Africa Mombasa and his whole crew. Um, and um, basically one of the one of one of the um, graffiti artists, which was part of his whole uh, collective at the time, came to the UK to kind of represent the Zulu nation and uh, Bombata, and his name is Brim, and he came to the UK and there was this documentary that filmed him travelling around the UK, um, hooking up with um, all of the different pockets of UK uh, hip-hop culture which was emerging at the time. So this is probably around, I reckon around 86. And uh, part, it was the first time in that documentary where you saw people like Goldie and 3D from Massive Attack. And... The Wild Bunch, which were the sound system that 3D was part of in Bristol, and what was hap- what happened in that in, in in the in the mid 80s in the UK kind of club culture, I think essentially one playing in nightclubs wasn't particularly easy. The influence of Jamaican culture on on, on Britain um, was very much about sort of sound system DJ culture, which essentially is how DJ culture kind of started and, and progressed in many, many ways, especially with hip-hop. And um, you had this kind of sound system energy, which would be a collective group of people that would come together to basically DJ, and people would be toasting, and then that became more about people rapping. And so you'd have your kind of MCs, you'd have your DJs, usually there would be a sort of graffiti element to it, So. Um, you know, when you look at something like Wild Bunch, you had people like Milo and Nelly Hooper who were DJing, and you know something like 3D who would be rapping, and um, and Daddy G, and you know uh, D would be painting, and, and and so there was this whole kind of collective and kind of cultural um, sort of, I suppose. It's the best way to describe it. You know, it, it encompasses all the different areas of, of the culture. And, and I became kind of obsessed with that world, seeing that documentary. You know, you were seeing people... that You, you were seeing things you'd never seen before. You know, this is when I was 14, you know. Um, and when you saw somebody who was in, you know, Levi's... Um, E-cut black jeans with shell toes, you know, snakeskin shell toes and, you know, uh, a goose down bomber jacket from, you know, from America that was, kind of hadn't really seen anything like that before. So it was visually, it was so stimulating, it was so vivid, it was so kind of, and you want, it was that feeling you were just desperate to be part of, it was so cool, you know, it was the ultimate cool to, to hang out, to be part of that environment. And just amazing characters, you know, people that just, you know, things weren't as available. So, you know, and to, 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 to find the right sneakers, to find the right clothes, the right, you know, records, everything. It was, it was a process. And through that process, you'd, you know, you'd, you'd, it would take time. and You'd have to go to places to find the right things in a way that doesn't really exist now because everything's so available, you know. Um, it could take you years to find a record. You know, but through that journey, you'd meet all the different people along the way that you became friends with, that you kind of built a community of. And, um, you know, that for me, that took me to places like Tokyo, to New York, to Los Angeles, uh, you know, which was, you know, the most amazing, the most amazing thing ever, you know, to be able to go and record shop in the places and find sneakers in New York or whatever was like the dream, you know. But it was through that discovery through the, the, that period of time that it, it allowed me to discover those things and, and want to be part of those things and, and you know, you've basically developed your, your musical um, journey, you know, your, you know your, the fabric of what, you, you know, what one does now and, and gave me that sort of education essentially, you know. The first gig that I ever went to was to see um, the sort of first club gig I ever really went to 
um, was to see Soul to Soul when I was about 14 um, in, um, in North London, Finsbury Park, and that was with Shock Sound System, Soul to Soul versus Shock Sound System, which was um, Ashley Beadle, who, who um, you know, went on to do lots of great records and uh, was part of Express 2. Um, to me, it was just this amazing, you know, the, the sort of, I suppose that the ultimate was something like Soul to Soul because they had their own record shop, they were putting out their own records, their label, um, and their parties. And just also, you know, the, the whole thing of culturally black and white culture coming together. And that was a really interesting and, uh, you know, um, sort of political thing that came together you know and 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 how you know these you know the, we were taking a lot of what was american culture and also bringing that back and sort of giving it a uk twist so what was interesting with with the sound system culture that developed taking from what was going on with reggae and um you know things like lovers reggae where, where it was kind of song based you know, fusing those elements with the sort of production the hip hop production, which was big, which was really influential at the time, and creating these new dynamic, new dynamics, I think partly because um, there was, you know, there was always a big sort of soul, rare groove scene, and reggae scene, and with the emergence of hip hop and the production, but rapping was definitely being led by the Amer you know, America really. So, in, in a certain way, it became a sort of, it was a way of being able to do something which was unique, you know, and um, and wasn't necessarily just copying what was going on in America. And a lot of those early records really became the sort of, the catalyst for what happened with contemporary American R&B, you know. Um, Soul to Soul being a huge sort of influence in that way, you know, with people like Puff Daddy and yeah. how he then took those sounds and kind of took R&B and mixed it with hip hop, you know, and created the sort of, Records like the early Mary J. Bly records and stuff like that were definitely sort of spawned from this history of sound system culture here, really. It's interesting right now because there seems to be a resurgence of sound system culture happening a bit. And, and, and it absolutely thrives in, 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 in you know, um, your more kind of blues level of, you know, reggae music culture. I mean, it's, it's, it's a massive root of that culture. And when you go somewhere like Notting Hill Carnival, you know, here, you'll see that as a, you know in its in its in its you know um, all its glory basically. But it's interesting to see at the moment where people are I think pulling away a bit again from the club experience and trying to do things which are more DIY. And so that's sort of bringing that sound system culture back into um, maybe more of an eclectic world of DJs. So things like what LCD. Um, and um, Soul Wax are doing at the moment. And then people like what, you know, where you look at sort of the ever-changing side of Massive Attack and what they've been doing lately and, and bringing that aesthetic more back into what they've been doing. There's more of a sort of anarchic environment. There's more of a kind of, you know, as, as the commercialism of culture continues and will always do so, there's always, you know, there needs to be a sort of juxtaposed position and I think that sometimes by having things which are a lot freer like you know when I was a kid you go to free parties you go to you know with what was going on with Acid House and Rave you'd be going to these mad events which weren't so kind of um, formula they, they, you know it, it was very free you know and it was very you know um, not full of lots of rules and you know more and more when you go to a nightclub these days the experience is um, is getting more and more rigid and, and you know so a lot of it's about freedom it's about the idea of just being able to go and set up and play yeah I mean with meltdowns definitely there's people that are involved that have very much been part of that culture and, and have inspired me from from growing up and, and being a fan of them as DJs so I'm trying to bring together quite a lot of different people in that way and, and, and on one of the the days trying to do this kind of big sort of outdoor sound system experience.